Welcome to the Splunk tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to explore the Splunk search functionality. We are going to see how to perform a basic search, how to perform search using filters. Then we are going to see the time frame and the timeline view. We will see what are the fields present under the sidebar. We'll see what are the search modes are there. We will use the OR operator and will perform the search functionality. And then we'll see the raw data based on which we are actually performing the search. So let's start exploring the search functionality. In our previous lecture, we already imported the data by using the sample data provided by the Splunk website. Now, in this tutorial, we will use the same data to perform the search functionality. If you would like to search any error or any message, you can directly type that message here and see the data if it is present or not. I just gave a one simple string that is category and I try to search. If you notice here, by default, it is searching within this time frame. If you would like to change this time frame, then we have to go to this next timeline feature. So what this timeline or the time frame feature is nothing but it is the, the window through which the data is getting searched. Now, I just gave this string and the default setting it has the last 24 hours. As the data set which we have imported, it is the older data. Hence, in my current time frame, this data is not getting searched. What I'll do, I'll just change from last 24 hours to all time. And now we can see the result. So this category key or the word is getting searched across the all the data set for all the time. And that is getting highlighted with this light pink color. So the all the words which are found in the result set get highlighted so that we can easily locate those. But how about performing search using the filters? So filters nothing but the particular type of data. Suppose I would like to search a data specific to this source attribute. How can I use that? In order to use that, what we have to do? We have to provide the source name and then it will suggest some values. You can select those values. Right now, my search is specific to this file and to this secure log. So all the data from this secure log will be shown if I hit this search green button. Now I can see the search data. So this way I just applied one filter that is source. Now suppose I would like to see the value with app server. How can I use? I can just enter the space then provide the value and search again. So the entries where the app server is maintained or mention all those entries will be shown in the screen. Let's provide the upper case, camel case kind of values and search it. We'll, we are checking whether the case sensitiveness is implemented. So irrespective of it is upper case or lower case, the values are getting written. So this is one of the convenient option so we don't have to worry whether the underlying data has a upper case or lower case you can provide in any case value let's explore the time frame feature so this time frame feature we can search against last 15 minutes last 60 minutes and so on suppose you would like to search a data one year ago or like two years ago you can provide that time frame. So here is a date and time range. You can provide the year here. For example, suppose 
September or August one and then you can provide the time and apply. So data will be searched within that time frame. If you like to search before, after or between, then you, you can provide those times and click apply and the data will be searched against that time frame. We have some advanced ranges also, uh, advanced feature also where we can provide particular time earliest and latest so these are the time frames are there these are the preset time frames then we have the relative time frame we have the date ranges and we have the date and time ranges here we can use between before and since i'll just go preset it and i'll just use the all time now the next thing is nothing but the sidebar so on the left hand side we see all these fields like source source type host index out of all these fields the source field and source type fields are selected which are mentioned here so the source field and source type in case you would like to use the host field also for display purpose then go to this all fields and select the checkbox host and that's it you will see the host is also mentioned immediately here in case you would like to see the line count you can add the line count also on the same line if you need any extract fields you can extract those fields by clicking that extract button and select what kind of fields you would like to select Let's go back to the search. What this green line is showing here. So what is this? So this is nothing but the timeline. We can have the different type of timelines. We can have the full. We can have the log scale. Or we can have the compact one. So on what time these logs are getting displayed or shown will be listed here. In the Splunk, everything act as an event. So it is event based driven. So what are the entry we see here? It's called as an one event. So this event occurring after certain frequency, that is what we can see with this time timeline view. If you remove these words and let's use sales data or let's use all the data and we'll see how this timeline view behaves. Now we can see the timeline view is more compact. So we see the most of the entries are populated here. We'll just go ahead and search. So that means for every second or for every minute, some event is happening. And that's the reason we see this kind of timeline view. We can zoom out to see the details more during what time frame these events have happened. If you want to see if any pattern exists in this data, then we can click on that. It will take some time to load. If it finds some pattern, it will show us. Right now, this is the text data, so it is not able to determine any particular pattern. We can gather the stats and we can see data in visual formats in kind of chart. We'll see these sections in detail in our upcoming lecture, but these are the views available by default. Now the next thing is search mode. So if you see on the right hand side here, we have the fast mode. So what is doing, what are the data we are pulling here? If have the like gigabytes of data or more volume of data F while fetching all the data it might take some time so you have the option to execute the search either fast mode smart mode or verbose mode in the fast mode the metadata or the the data which is associated with the event will not be loaded it will just give you the event data so that way it will not take longer time to fetch the information.
the smart mode will fetch the event and its a metadata and then we have the verbose mode it will pull all the information about the event and all the fields so let's select the smart mode and we see the information here in this information box we can see the data in the list format table format or the raw format raw format is nothing but the data how it will look in the file system or in the raw data let's select the list format which i normally prefer to see the data in the list format because it's more readable then we have the formats such as if you want to see the row number if you select no the row number will not be shown if you select it the row number will be available now if you see this page it has only 20 events per page if you want to have the more data on your each page then you can increase to 50 events per page so you, you can have the more data and you can analyze the data in this page in this data set we have the n number of pages so only 50 events are fetched per page if you want to go to this fourth page you can select and the fourth page will be loaded so this way we can see uh, the format is also configured we also saw the search mode we'll see how to open the raw data so for example this is the event and we would like to see how this particular event looks like in the actual file in order to see that you have to just expand this and go to the event and click on the show source so this will show us data how it looks in the actual file so this is the raw file and this is the data from the file now the last thing is how to use the or operator in the string in order to use the or operator present so let's go ahead and search it so we have category and i will use or and i will use fill let's see so this time the result contains either category or fill messages in case you would like to search all errors or you can use error or fail or fatal if you remember the keywords which we are using are case sensitive so that means the or small case will not work we have to use or so whenever you use the keyword the color changes from black to orange and now I will search it so what this is doing we are searching all the records by using or key which can contain either error or fail or fatal in case you are not sure whether the word is fail or failed then you can use the asterisk sign so all the words which has a prefix as fail will be searched so this way we can search using the or key in the search string so far we have covered the topics related to the basic search how to use the filter search what is the time frame and how to use that functionality then we saw the timeline feature which will show us the brief idea about the where the events has occurred then we saw the field sidebar we also saw the search modes and then we used the functionality to see the raw data and then finally we saw how to use the or operator in the next lecture we are going to explore how to export the data and other features